Hey everybody, Mr. Taylor. So now we've moved on to another type of transform transformation, which is reflection. Uh, reflection is a mirror type image. Uh, it is a rigid transformation, uh, which we can say, I think we call um, an isometry. Well, let's take a look at Explore activity one in the book and see what we have to do to be able to get a, a understanding of this these properties of reflection. Well, your learning objective is you will describe the properties of orientation and congruency of reflection. So two words that we definitely have to understand orientation and congruency. And then a little later on we'll we'll get into what is a uh, what is a line of reflection? So key vocabulary is orientation. Orientation is the arrangement of the points relatively to one another after the transformation has occurred. Congruency is having the same shape, size, and measure. So we've looked at translation. We found out that when you translate, then your figures are still going to be whether it's the the pre-image or the image it's still going to be uh, congruent. So the same thing here happens with uh, reflection. Uh, reflection is just a transformation that flips across a line and that line that it flips across is called a line of reflection. But again, it's going to have the same shape, the same size, and the same measure. Just keep that, that in mind as we go forward. So, uh, a reflection again is a transformation that flips across a line and the line is called uh, the line of reflection. Each point and its image are the same distance from this line. Very important piece of information there. Each point and its image is the same distance from that line of reflection. As you can see here from this mountain picture uh, of you know, in this lake and, you know, it looks where uh, the bottom and then the bottom. And the bottom is not down here, but that's called a line of reflection. We, we, we'll see exactly how that works. Okay. So, the book tells us we have this triangle shown on the grid and this triangle A, B, C. And, again, this is called our pre-image. So, they want us to, two things we're going to do. First, we're going to reflect it across the X, and then we'll reflect it across the Y axis. So, we're going to come, let me get my little selector, or my pointer, actually. So, we're going to first reflect it across here, and then we're going to go back and reflect it across the Y axis. So here's what it's asking you to do. Fold your paper along the x-axis and trace the image. So if you were to take your paper and fold it down and you trace, you're going to trace C and B first and then you'll trace A. Uh, and then unfold it and you'll have A prime, B prime, and C prime. And then it asks us what is the line of reflection for this and so forth. So, and then it says find the uh, perpendicular distance from each point. Okay. Next it says find the perpendicular distance from each point to the line of reflection from A prime, B prime, and C prime. So, we'll look back at the figure again and the C it's the distance similar from uh, the pre-image of ABC to A prime, B prime, and then it asks us what do we notice. And then the last thing that you're going to have to do is fold your paper from uh, A along the y-axis and trace the image of ABC and label your vertices of that image. Uh, and this will be A second prime, B second prime, C second prime, and it again asks us what is the line of reflection and how do we uh, be able to work from there. 
So one thing that we need to do is just, you know, you look at your particular graph. So you might want to stop it here if you don't have your textbook and uh, draw and the particular image. You can just get a plain sheet of a graph paper and, and draw this. And uh, you can do it on a sheet of regular paper and, and draw this uh, and, and then do the follow the actual uh, steps there. And we'll go through them uh, in a minute. So go ahead and stop the video, take a look at this, okay, get all this information down, start the video again, and then go to this, make sure you get all the information down, stop the video again, and then I'll. Uh, I'll come up with what the books say what we're supposed to do. Okay, so if, now if you're back, here, let's start with this particular point. So what I want to do is, if I were to trace, like I said, if I were to trace this and flip it over, that's going to be my B, and this is going to be my new C, and then, of course, my A will be right here. Now, even though we don't, we haven't really gotten to that point, but if if, if we're re reflecting across the x-axis, so that means that my B and C should be the same distance as C prime and B prime. So if I were to look from the x-axis, I'm counting one two places so it should be one two places and yes this is just a check factor and then a of course a is not on the top it should be way down here and then let's look at one two three four five places from the x-axis and I count one two three four five places so again this is our pre-image and here this would be our image and that's reflecting uh, across the x-axis. So what is the x-axis? x-axis become our line of reflection. Okay, so D says uh, find the perpendicular distance uh, from each point to the line of reflection, just like I just told you. Here, if we went at point A, point A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so five units here from A. Point B would be one, two, two units there. And point C would be one, two, two units there. Then it tells us, well, let's go down and find the perpendicular distance from each point to the line of reflection. And we're talking about A prime. So A prime starts here, one, two, three, four, five. Five units, and notice the five units and the five units are the same. B is, B prime is one, two. So there's our two units for B prime. Notice that, that the units are the same. And C prime is one, two. And notice that these units are the same. So then that will give you the answer to F. Uh, what do you notice about the distance you found in D and E? between the actual pre-image and the image and the line of reflection, you know that they're the same distance from the line of reflection. Okay. Let's take a look at if we were to uh, go from, and this is the reflect, fold the paper here, if we fold A across the y-axis. If we did, then here you have A and C is going to be uh, where it's back. It'll be, they'll be somewhat back to back. If you can see that, they're like back to back and B will be all the way over here. So it's going to be like a back to back thing here, you know, going over the Y axis. Uh, so it asks us, well, what is the line of reflection? So if we fold it back this way, then the Y axis will be our line of reflection. And that's what we're saying here. And it says, how does the image in your drawing compares to the pre-image? Well, just like you learned back in 5th, 6th, 7th grade, uh, 
A prime, B prime, C is flipped across the Y axis. This is flipped across the Y axis. And this particular one is flipped across the X axis. So it's, it's pretty, 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 pretty straightforward. If you're just doing the uh, the drawing and, and and the tracing, just remember, again, if we look at the y-axis being our line of reflection, notice what we see with a one from y one two points or two two spaces one to a prime same two c is one two spaces c prime one two two spaces. B is one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. B prime, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, spaces. So just just really keeping uh, keeping an eye out of what's your line of reflection and, and make sure you know that your distance is it's congruent, the shape and everything is congruent, but you gotta make sure that your distance line up also with your line of reflection. Alright. So that does it for uh this explorer activity one. Um uh, looking at the particular uh properties of reflection. This is Mr. Taylor and I'll talk to you soon.